volume negates luck. The more times you do this, the more likely it is that you will find someone where all of the things line up. So you, you feel discouraged now, but now is the actual, the moment where you have to keep going. Uh, even though it might, you might want to be like, Oh, I'm just going to take a break. You can't do it. Yeah. You got to keep going. It's like, it's like a game of dice where you have six dice and you roll them. And if all the numbers match, you win. And if one of them doesn't match, you lose. Uh, and the, you talking about Yahtzee. Nope. It's, you got to roll them all at once and you only get one roll. And, uh, but the, the, the trick is that you can roll as many times as you want. So how many times do you roll? As many times as it takes. I know it hurts. I'm sorry. It's it's not, not, I, I, I... All right. You came to the right place, you ding dong. It's called communication, baby. <laughs> Welcome to Dr. Ethan's Dating Corner, a subsection of the Crunch Catholic Podcast, wherein you can submit an order for a Russian bride. It's your boy, Ethan. And I'm Patrick. Welcome to the darkest corner of the internet, where we open the disgusting closet that is your dating life and fix all of your problems. And we mail you a Russian bride. Yeah, she comes in a little box. She's also a contortion. She comes in a big box with plenty of holes. That we poked in with a pencil put before it, we sent her over. They put it. They put them in the good boxes. Yeah. When they come from Russia. And we also we also ship it like from the top right corner of Russia to the to Alaska. So it's not too bad of a jaunt. It's right it's across really, the river. The ocean. It's really. It would be like if you were in a tent. And you got picked up by the wind. Yes. God bless you. Let's get into the All questions. Right. If you want to ask a question of your own, you can go to bit.ly slash crunch discord. That's bit.ly slash crunch discord. And you can go to the dating corner section, ask your question, and someone will probably answer it right away. And then we'll answer it on the show so you can get some real advice. Not this fake advice from these scrubs in our discord. I'm sorry. That was really mean to our lovely discord people. I would just like to say that I do not, I do not condone the ordering or shipping of Russian women for the sake of marriage. I do think that you should find your woman like without their consent. Does. If someone, whatever someone wants oh. to do in the privacy of their own mailing room is their own yes. business and not mine or the government's and Russian mail, Russian mailmen can ship as many women as with their consent as they choose. That's Please don't buy a woman. Please don't buy a woman on the internet. <laughs> Please don't buy a woman. <laughs> Please don't buy a woman online. Okay. All right. Go to the Crunch Discord and meet a woman there. I right. need, and then we'll mail them. I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're not mailing any women. There's no. This is. I just want this to be Ethan, clear. We can mail as many women as we want. It's 2024. All right. Women we can't, can become males no. if they please. In this age of of the Mister Beastification of podcasting. Where where Mr. Beast is, I mailed a hundred women it, to see <laughs> to see what would happen. We can't we can't be anywhere close to that. We need to be standing up in defense of ladies mm. for once. Why don't why don't more guys stand up for women? Yeah, why don't why don't why, more, why where did all, where have all the good men gone? And where are all the gods? Where's rah, the rah, great Rasputin. <laughs> I just want everyone to know that I'm a simp for for ladies. <laughs> we got to ask a question. I just I just don't want anyone to order a woman. That's all I want. I don't to think say. any of our audience knows how to order a woman. I think that's the main thing keeping them from doing it. That and it being wrong. Yes. So I you know need it's some not advice. wrong. Giving advice on the internet. I need some advice on flirty work relationships. I, twenty two year old female, and a guy at my work, twenty two year old male. Have a slightly confusing friendship. He's quiet, but he opens up more around certain coworkers he's better friends with. He keeps looking up at me from his desk. I sit at reception, and he's a salesman. And he, he, I, even though I'm engaged to a warehouse worker, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Wait, hold on. This no, is no, no, from no, the no. office. This is not an office yeah, thing. No, no, this no. is not an office thing. Okay. So it's difficult to, to tell. Office thing. So it's difficult to tell if he's just being friendly or if he likes me. I'm not actually interested. He's significantly shorter than me. Nice. He's not Catholic. <laughs> That was first. Dude. That Dude. was first. 
That's so mean. That's this guy just got mogged. Dude, by this ch- <laughs> Chad put, woman mogs short, short king. You put short before <laughs> not Catholic. Come on. <laughs> the women are not beating the allegations. Dude, maybe oh. we should sell women. <laughs> that was so mean. Oh, man. I'm not attracted <laughs> I'm not actually interested. He's short and not Catholic. And to be honest, that's uh, kind of it. <laughs> <laughs> but those are wow. major things for me as a six foot God fearing woman. Okay. I'll give you a pass. I'll give you a pass. Yeah. You're a tall girl. As we all know from the Netflix film, tall girl and tall girl mm-hmm. too. It's hard to be a two. They tall. made a sequel to tall girl. <laughs> too tall, too girl. It is hard to be a tall girl. A taller six, girl also she was like six foot in the in the show and they made her like tower over everyone as if everyone in the world is five foot five the only tall girl media we need is that episode of nes Declassified school survival guide where moe's accidentally steps on another girl's uh diorama of the school uh-huh. and 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 she says to her how's the weather up there <laughs> and it's like a it's like a, a world shattering moment for her she's too tall it is crazy People used to imagine. I can't imagine a world where someone is gets bullied for being tall. Tall has always been cool. I know, in my mind at least, because I've always been yeah. tall. Um, so your short king that's not Catholic. Uh, to be honest, that's kind of it. I am definitely attracted to him, despite that, though. Okay, all right, that's a hold win. on. So I'm confused, but. So there's a procedure in Turkey where they break your shins and they can add with metal rods to your legs. That'll give you an extra two, three inches. Yeah, dude. So I don't know how short we're talking. Could be fixed. If she's like, he's 5'10", it's like, all right, we need to back up. You need to change your... Just have him wear platformers like Robert Downey Jr. But if he's 5'5"? Yeah, just move on. I see where you're coming from. I think... So she's attracted to him... Yeah. But she doesn't like. We haven't even Wait, gotten to this question yet. Hold on. Uh, oh, okay. I context, was like, I thought that was we it. We both work at a park, okay. spend a lot of time together. Sometimes driving alone in a work truck for a couple of hours, or being the only two employees left when others leave early. We smile at each other a lot and sometimes tease each other, but we have no relationship outside of work. I've never even texted the guy, and since dudes are generally oblivious and he's pretty shy, I'll let it. Hey, I thought you were going to say something else. Since up. he's pretty short, pretty shy. <laughs> Uh, I'll let it roll out until the end of summer. We're working a seasonal job and he's going back to school in September and then move on. I know I'm notorious for catching feels quickly and intensely and then becoming scrupulous about how much I am affected and how much I just want to flirt despite having no idea how to flirt and being terrible at it. Most likely, I just need to chillax. But my question is, is it wrong to pseudo flirt with a man I have no intent in dating? Mm. That's a that's a long walk for a tall drink of water, so I'm, I'm okay with that tall drink of water. Yeah. Uh, that's a good question. So this is, this is hard for me because I was a, I was the king of flirting with no intention of dating when I was young. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. I witnessed it. It was awful. <laughs> Phoebe hated you for a minute. So because fun, of it. Though. <laughs> you hated me? Phoebe did. Oh, Phoebe did? Yeah, fair. Yeah. She was like, <laughs> she was like, he's it. flirting with all my friends <laughs> when you visited. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> What else are you supposed to do when you're a single 21-year-old guy? Dude, Ethan. Going to another college states away for like three days. Can I tell a story? Or, what, Can I tell a story that's yeah. not going to be good for anybody to hear? Okay. <laughs> Ethan, Ethan takes one of one of Phoebe's best friends. Takes take, he, he said good. He's saying, instead of just saying goodbye, it was nice to meet you like a normal person. He takes her hand. He kisses it and says, it was lovely to meet you. <laughs> electric i saw it happen i was like yes dude she's never Come gonna on. forget that <laughs> yeah and she didn't and she didn't no that's I'm so sure she did. funny everybody's married I'm now sure it's did. all fine yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> i forgot that i did that oh man i'm uh, sure she, i'm sure phoebe does too i'm sure phoebe forgot about it too but oh man, man. that was funny ethan came to visit yeah, us really... for a week and it was electric yeah. Then we had Mark Hart on the podcast and Ethan's life changed. What a weekend, man. Yeah, I bought a book at the Franciscan bookstore for like nineteen ninety five. Like an idiot. I could have bought it on Thrift Books. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's not important. <laughs> um here's the thing. 
so I coming so obviously right I've been here I've done whatever you've done I've probably done it more and I've done it worse yeah and I've suffered the consequences flirting is one of those things that's really really fun like it's just incredibly fun to do so I understand why people do it and it's kind of addicting right because it's it's like you get to um, take like a little risk so it's like a little gamble Mm -hmm. right and then you when that risk pays off, right? So like the, the flirting works or they flirt back, then not only do you get rewarded for your risk, but you also like the little dopamine receptors go off in your brain as it relates to like attraction and sexuality. So it's like combining all the fun of gambling with all the fun of sex in like this weird, like just electric conversation, right? Flirting, very fun, which is why it's that side note. Like if you're a married guy, and you're just like talking to other women all the time. This is bad, right? Because you're you're connecting all these things in your brain that you shouldn't mm-hmm. be connecting with other women. Um, so it's... I don't want to tell you that you have to stop flirting with your short king. Um, because you're both But if both you have no intention single. of dating him... If you have no intention of dating him, this is just kind of mean. <laughs> Like honestly, yeah. Like it's not, yeah. That's it's fair. not good for you because you're just kind of like, you're like, what you're doing is you're using him to feel something for yourself. Yeah, and not good. It's, so it's like for the same reason that like hooking up is wrong or like emotion, like trauma dumping on someone is wrong. Like pseudo flirting with no intention of dating is also wrong because hooking you're up, trauma dumping pseudo flirting by the way just <laughs> yes up yes this, from top to bottom it's you know yeah um so and maybe you don't see it that way but based on the information that you've given it sounds like this is pretty one-sided for you yeah i i would stop that's not it's fair. probably better to just stop and um maybe just like maybe slouch a little bit you know <laughs> <laughs> Is there are there any trenches in this park that you can walk in and mm-hmm. he can kind of be outside of the trench? And he can kind of feel tall. Like they did in, when when Tom Cruise is in movies and he has to walk next to someone, they dig a trench for the taller actor and Tom Cruise has to walk alongside them. How do they hide the trench in the background? It's not in the background. It's like it's like a shoulder mm-hmm. height up. Okay. That's funny. So it's like if the camera's pointed straight at you, you wouldn't see it. They do the same thing with Bruno um, Mars actually. He's very short and they only hire short dancers to dance with him. Don't believe me. Just watch. Um, when you watch, you got to go like the, that. It, it's okay. You might have to become a little bit of a a cold woman. There's another word that I could have used. But like you, you know what I mean. No, I don't. You, I'm not going to say I'm it. an I'm innocent little cherub. I'm not going to say the word on the podcast. But you might have to become a little cold towards him and he might not like that. And you just need to be okay with it. You can opposite of flirt with him. It's going to yeah. do the opposite in the short term, but it'll do the, in, the, in the gambling analogy, right? If you don't reciprocate, okay, that's fine. Now there's just variable, right? Now there's, now it's not like the same reward. It's not Pavlov's dog, right? It's like, it's like, oh, there's some time there's randomized reward. And so now it's even more interesting. I kind of want to flirt with a little bit more. But after he gets the cold, 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 cold enough times, he'll he'll be he'll be done. Right. Or you could make out in the park one day when you're working. Mm. Nope. Counterintuitive, in my opinion. Probably <laughs> counterintuitive. Probably counterintuitive. It is an option. Sorry, counterproductive. It's not, not high... counterintuitive. Counterproductive. It's very intuitive. It's yeah. very intuitive. Counterproductive. This actually is probably this guy's dream. It's like make out with an Amazonian six foot tall woman in, in the, the forest. forest. <laughs> <laughs> so never 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 kiss a girl you meet in the woods you're gonna wake up 20 years later surrounded by a bunch of dwarves playing hey, bowling ball nine pins question asker are you a nymph <laughs> are you a are you a sprite that belongs to the forest and you can't leave and you're riding into this podcast yeah if so please let us know we'd love to have you on talk about are you a are you a are you a m evan dyad <laughs> what, what are you are you the spirit of an ancient oak tree? Are you are you some kind of 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 forest glen <laughs> witch? 
Hey, question asker, do you live in a bog? <laughs> <laughs> do you live in a hollowed you, out you, tree in a bog? Do you <laughs> do you do you by do you perchance have a sword that you distribute to those you deem worthy? <laughs> Do you live in a hollowed out tree in a bog and men on quests come to seek your counsel and you know the way to an ancient lake? That's Have you know. ever used a rune for anything? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what a rune is? <laughs> I sure don't. Phoebe, you know what I hate? <laughs> what do you hate? Big tech. Okay. I live in constant fear of my precious Twitter account getting taken down because I don't own it. I don't own, I like owning the places where my website is. And that's why the Crunch, I don't know if you know this, the Crunch website is hosted on Patmos. Are you, are you familiar with Patmos? I am not. Tell me well, I'm going to tell you, that's so good. I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. Patmos is your island of refuge in the ocean of big tech. They provide top-notch web and app hosting services, hosting and API GPU services. And if you know what that means, tell me. That's awesome. I don't know if I should say that, but I'm not a techie guy. They handle all of our website stuff, and it runs more smooth than it ever has in the past. Um, all backed by no censorship guarantee. I know I can say anything I want on this podcast. I made a joke on the last episode, a little bit off color. I know that me saying something like that isn't going to get me thrown off the internet and our livelihood won't be taken away from us. You like you like feeding our children, right? I enjoy that very much. Thanks to Patmos, I can safely feed my children ongoing. Um, they offer unbeatable pricing and security from the ground up because they own the dirt that their servers sit on. They own everything that your stuff is hosted on. Um, and I get the best service because I have like an actual person to talk to. Her name's her name's Camilla. She's she's great. And they never offshore or sub out work. Everything is done in-house by them. There's just no better value in tech services than Patmos. I'm I'm honest. I'm on I'm, I'm being honest when I say that. They've taken such good care of us. Uh, whether you want to build an awesome new app or a website or host your current site, all you need to do is reach out to Patmos at patmos.tech. They help businesses, missions, churches of all sizes accomplish their goals with great value and service. Tell them the crunch sent you and you get 10% off your next web project or free hosting migration, whichever you need. That's patmos.tech freedom as a service. Isn't that great, Phoebe? It's amazing. I know, right? It's awesome. Thanks for joining me for the ad read. I love you. <laughs> hey, Phoebe, do you remember when I crapped myself the first day I did Exodus 90? I will never forget that. <laughs> <laughs> So, hi, my name is Patrick Devy. I did Exodus 90 a couple of years ago, and I did poop my pants on the first day because I fasted and drank too much coffee. Um, but did you know that Exodus 90 is not just about fasting and cold showers before Easter? Did you know that? No, I didn't. Tell me more. So they do a little bit, a little thing called St. Michael's Lent that you can actually go sign up for now if you are a man and you're interested in getting yourself ready for uh, getting yourself ready for Advent, getting yourself ready for Christmas. Um, you can download their app and you can actually get their, um, they have daily scripture meditations, prayers, reflections on getting closer to God as a man. They have also have a new course on the Eucharist just in time for now that we're after the Eucharistic revival. We can you know, get closer to Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. If you go to exodus90.com slash the crunch, you can let them know that we sent you and you can enjoy the beautiful, uh, the beautiful prayers and courses they have available on there right now it's exodus 90.com slash the crunch thank you exodus 90 for sponsoring this episode of the crunch next question next question yeah this one comes from da jimmer i've noticed a peculiar pattern in my adult life thus far where the only women who i become interested in are the only women who become interested in slash attracted to me i don't find attractive at all while the women i do find interesting and attractive either reject me or burn me in some way it's puzzling it's not only physical attractiveness either. I can't seem to find a woman whose personality, character, etc. I can be comp I can be compatible with. This is both in person and on the apps. I work out. I eat healthy. I have hobbies. I can hold the conversation comfortably in social settings. I like to listen to people. I have solid friendships with virtuous people. I have good relationships with my parents and siblings. I'm generally industrious. I keep my affairs in order. Is it just bad luck or something? Are my standards too high? Or have I simply just not met the right person yet? What is it? This is easy. Again, this is me. Uh, 
when I was in college, I, I, I had a terrible track record of, of women that I did not like falling in love with me, <laughs> probably because of the aforementioned <laughs> uh, flirting th- situations, the flirting. Yeah. Uh, and it kept, I, I would, there was the, it'd be these beautiful women that I would meet and I would try to, I took them out on dates. I would go on dates all the time with women that I liked and, and uh, take them to date parties and do all these things. And they would either end up like going with other guys or just like ghosting me or, and I was just like, what the heck? Like, I did all the right things. Sometimes I didn't do the right things. And I was like, I deserved it. But sometimes I would do the right things. And it's like, okay, I asked you out. I took you out. I, you know, I made my intentions very clear. We had great conversation. You know, I paid for the meal. I, you know, was like all of your friends liked me. And then it just wouldn't work out. And looking back now, the only thing that I can see it as is like, um, just opportunities for me to grow in virtue, to be ready to meet my actual wife, you know? Cause it's like, obviously if you're asking out women and they're turning you down, that means that there's no shortage of women that you're around. Like you're meeting women, you're going out with them, you're on the apps, like you're doing all the things you're supposed to do. It just hasn't worked out yet. So I don't, I don't think it's anything about you. I just think it's, it's one of those, this is something I know you've asked about uh, entrepreneurship videos lately in the discord. This is an Alex Hormozzi principle. Volume negates luck. The more times you do this, yes. the more likely it is that you will find someone where all of the things line up. So you you feel discouraged now, but now is the actual the moment where you have to keep going. Uh, even though it might you might want to be like, oh, I'm just going to take a break. You can't do it. Yeah, you got to keep going. It's like it's like a game of dice where you have six dice and you roll them, and if all the numbers match, you win, and if one of them doesn't match, you lose. Uh, and the you talking about Yahtzee? Nope. It's you got to roll them all at once, and you only get one roll. And uh, but the 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 trick is that you can roll as many times as you want. So how many times do you roll? As many times as it takes. Just keep rolling. Yeah. Just keep going. Just keep, keep rolling. going. Just keep going. Yeah. And uh, there's no time limit uh, until you die. So just keep rolling. Just as many rolls as you can get. It'll work out eventually. Um, that's true. In this is this is it's it's funny because uh, at Her- speaking of Hermosa, he talked about this in a podcast recently. He was like. Um, making a lot of money and getting in shape requires similar skills. So does getting a girlfriend. It's a lot of like doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. by changing, you know, one or two variables. Um, and so just keep, just keep doing it. Keep putting in the hours and the reps and, and you'll, you'll do fine. You'll find something. Yeah. It's not the advice you want. Yeah. I didn't want that advice no. when I was like, Hey Joe, why is my, uh, why is my why is my business not growing as fast as I want it to? He's like, well, how are you are you calling? How often are you calling? Well, I'm calling like you know, 25, 30. Okay, call more. Just keep going. Just keep calling more. I'm like, no, but I want the magic thing. No, just call more mm-hmm. people. Whatever work you're doing now, do twice as much. And then you'll have if you want to go for, twice as fast. Yeah. If you don't, yeah. and and if you don't want to call twice as many, then you probably don't want to go twice as fast. So if you don't want to, like, it's like. Just keep keep doing the work. Just keep putting in the actual work, and then and you, you're do if you're doing the right things, keep doing it. It'll work out eventually. Right. Have you considered moving to the forest? Finding a nice dyad. <laughs> Finding a, a dyad to live with in a bog. Yes, in a in a in a mysterious house that disappears when you turn around after you leave. Speaking it. of, what is Pete? Like I've heard, is it is it is it poop? He was a doctor no, 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 back no. in the 9th, 20th century who advocated for eating carrots and ice cream. Pete? Ray Pete. Dr. Ray Pete, a right-wing nutritionist. It's not important. Pete? Carrots and carrots and ice cream? That sounds amazing. Not together, but he has this uh, their carrot salad. I also did So it was like olive together. oil, carrots, um, coconut oil, like all these different oils mixed together. You eat it. It cleans you out. It's really good for your digestive system, and then he firmly believed in the uh, in the power of fat and sugar, mm. and so he he ate a pint of ice cream every day. <laughs> <laughs> what did he look like? He was very healthy until the day he died. <laughs> at at twenty seven, he, he he drank a glass of orange juice every day. Um, all animal fats, animal meats, like he was one of those types of guys. Mm. But but he had a lot of science behind it. It wasn't just like a yeah, it wasn't just random. It wasn't just a random guy. Anyway, peat? Is that your like question? P A T. Like you find it in bogs, you put it in scotch. What is it? It I think it keeps the bugs away in the bug spray. 
That's Deet. Oh. Let's see. I never mind. I it's, googled it's it. It's a. It's a it's a stock you can invest in that has a bunch of real estate in it. Oh no, that's a REIT. There it is. Peat is the surface organic layer of soil, consists mostly of partially decomposed organic matter, derived mostly from plant material that is accumulated under conditions of water logging. So you find it in bogs. Um and you put it in Yeah, why is but it's click controversial because it's a non renewable resource. Whatever. I don't know. I, I think Pete is tasty when you put it in scotch. Anyway. <laughs> I'm happy for it. It comes from a bog. It comes from a bog. It comes, People are upset it about from... it because it's not. We should do a live podcast from a bog. No, dude, you shouldn't go into bogs. That's where the dyads live, and they'll trick well, you. Well, just not at night. Just not at night. You go during the day, you're fine. I saw this video of dudes, like, jumping around in bogs, and someone commented, yeah. like, this is why we shouldn't have gotten rid of oral tradition because any Scottish grandmother would have told you those guys are not the same people coming out of that bog. Yeah, don't don't go into a bog. They uh, left their souls blessed. in that bog. Mm-hmm. That's what happened. All right, next question from Tanner. I asked out an acquaintance of mine a few months ago. Nice. nice. <laughs> she turned me down because she was still oh. getting over her ex-boyfriend. Recently, she's been flirting with me a ton and it's left me very confused. She's repeating a lot of the same behavior that she did the last time right before she ultimately rejected me. I think there's two possibilities here. One, either she's over her ex and is into me or she's flirting with me and doesn't even know it. Is it worth is it worth asking her for clarity on this or should I leave it alone? If she's purposely flirting with me, I'd like to cut to the chase and just take her on a date. If she doesn't even know she's flirting with me and isn't interested in dating me at all, I'd like to let her know how confusing all of this is in explicit terms so she'll tone it down a bit. I did briefly mention her confusing flirting behavior the first time she rejected me, so she should already know it's an issue. Maybe I wasn't clear enough. My only concern is, if I confront her on this, I'll make things worse or come off as creepy. Again, it's been months since the rejection, so if I bring it up now after all this time, it may look like I've been hung up on her and and have just refused to move on. For context, she's studying at a local college. I've graduated. We're in the same church group. We've only ever hung out in group settings. We don't text each other. So I doubt it's a matter of her viewing me as a best friend. She can safely joke around, etc. Some examples of her flirting, past and present, because I know people will ask. One, insisting on giving me a birthday present even when I told her I didn't want one. Two, giving me a really thoughtful yeah. birthday present at that. It was really thoughtful. <laughs> it was really thoughtful. Okay. Yeah. Three, pulling me aside after an event or two to chat about absolutely nothing. Four, telling me she likes my outfits. Five, making a point to tease me every time she sees me and then not doing that to anyone else, etc. What should he do, Dr. Ethan? This is, this, is cut, this is about as cut and dry as it gets. Yolanda, I just wanted to talk to you for a second. Do you remember when I asked you out and you said you were still getting over your boyfriend? Yes. I feel like you've been flirting with me a lot. I still really like you. I would love to take you out on a date still. Is that something that you'd be interested in or am I misreading the signals here? And then that just, that puts it all out in the open. It's like, I I still want to take you out. I've given you some space. I'm getting some different signals than I did before. You tell me, you know? And then if she's like, no, I'm still getting over my boyfriend. uh, Then then just say, please stop teasing me and giving me gifts. (laughs) Just give her the gift back. Oh, I wouldn't have that. this. No, it's not a good idea. Maybe her love language. Yeah, this is that's a that's a tough one, but I think it's it's relatively easy to solve. You just have to be brave. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I don't know why I'm yawning. It's late. I'm... It's ten o'clock where you are. We got to wrap up the show. Yeah, man, we got to wrap up the show. Do we have time for one more question? No. We can do one more quick one since Tanner's was pretty easy. <clears throat> Make sure you open this link and have it up for the video pod. Question. Dr. Uh, Ethan is always asking people if they're on the apps, but are you creative enough to find love on Facebook Marketplace? <laughs> okay. I think you should pull this up for the video listeners. The video pull viewers. It up. It, oh, you want me to pull it yeah, up? Yeah, it's on It's on the Discord on uh, dating topics. I'll copy right, it right. and I'll put it in in our little chat that we have our little oh, private please. dm makes it super easy for me there it is nope. oh it's got a notification on discord never mind i just posted the link to the chat no. it which is fine i found it okay um 
share screen. Okay. Got it. Okay. Cool We're freaking I- IKEA bar stools. Thirty dollars listed a week ago in Falls Church VA. Cool freaking IKEA chair. I've got four of them. Thirty dollars a chair. I'll deliver it for twenty five bucks. One. Send job offers to my LinkedIn. Two. Only the red shirt is the one in a re- only red shirt is the one in a relationship. Amendment 01. Three. We're only friends. Four. If you want to go out with us, put it on our team's calendar. <laughs> Five. Jimmy Johns may be buying our stools. Six. If you work for a golf company, please send us new clubs. Seven. <laughs> guess green shirts height. That's pretty funny. Oh, hello. Are you seeing this? No. Oh, wow. Looking good, man. <laughs> nice. Chess. This is great. I mean, this is very clever. They've got, for audio listeners, we've got one of one of the guys laying seductively across the stools. Another guy is just swinging a golf club on the stools. Another guy is playing chess on the stools. Another guy is doing the Trump uh, fist in the air uh, shot. And then just some pictures of the stools. Which is probably helpful for the purchasing of the stools. Um, should, I, yeah. should I DM I, them and say, hey, are these still available? <laughs> let's both do it. No, no. Do you think these are listeners? I don't think these are listeners. Um, wait, uh, so he said, shout out to Scott for posting this. I don't know if Scott is the guy who posted it. Now it's a fella named David who lives in Virginia. And he's not friends yeah. with anyone I know. Um, he's a military man. Jimmy John's I think that's maybe creative. buying our stools. Why would Jimmy John's women, be buying their stools? Because they need furniture. I think women do look on Facebook Marketplace very often, but you need to be in the right you need to be in the right category. So I think this makes sense, right? Women are women be shopping for furniture on Facebook Marketplace for their little apartments. So I, I would recommend maybe getting like a, a jute rug and just holding it up next to yourself or maybe potentially a, um, a leather recliner. Maybe that was a male thing. Yeah, what do women like to sit on? Um, they like a to pillow? sit on pillows on the ground. Yeah. They like to sit on um, rugs. Women like to sit on the floor until they get pregnant. Then they're not too I think big what fans. You- what you need to do is you need to become a vintage furniture flipper and you need to post a picture of yourself in or with or on all of the furniture that you flip and you will meet some some very determined some lovely ladies uh, and 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 uh, 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 fungible women fungible in that they have funds in that like if they're going out and they're buying furniture on Facebook it means they got money to spend you know? uh, I see I see. So a commodity, they're fungible. The, I'm not saying that we send the women on Facebook Marketplace. Full circle, baby. Let's go right back to the beginning where we started. <laughs> I think it's a great idea. I love it when the boys get creative. I think that's fun. I think dudes rock. I think dudes rock generally. <sighs> that's it for us today. That's it's all late. we got. We've got to go to bed. I have another day of work tomorrow. I probably As have a you. baby now. Probably by the time this comes out, this comes out on August 14th. I'm in my umbilical. I'm in my umbilical era. Oh, it's August 14th. Uh, St. Michael's Lent starts tomorrow. Go to exodus90.com slash the crunch and join me to keep vigil on Friday morning at two o'clock in the morning. The boys are going to be up and at them. We're going to pray matins at 2 a.m. on Friday. Did you make a Instagram post about that? Oh, yeah. Okay. I need to make mine. Yeah. I already made the other one just in case, but you should make it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I'm not joking when I tell you I have not had a spare moment. I figured that was <laughs> so. the case, and I was like, I'm already in front of my camera, so I might as well just take the one minute to record. You're the best, ad. man. You take care of me so but much. But you should do it because that way it's not me posting the same video twice. It'll look like I'm posting the same <gasps> video twice. I think it'd be funny if you sent me the video and then I just... I just used your voice, but I mouthed the words. That would be funny, but people would get confused. Yeah. Go to access90.com slash the crunch to join me on uh, St. Michael's Lent, a 45 day. I would also like to say thank you to Patmos hosting solutions for sponsoring this podcast. Uh, If you are a person, a young man in tech, like surely one of those boys was on the stools, you're looking for a career or maybe you own a business and, uh, and you need a hosting solution. Go to patmos.tech. 
uh, Exodus 90 and Patmos Hosting Solutions, the best sponsors we've ever had on this show. Take that, everybody else. Come back and we'll see. Patrick, do you have anything else for the people? Once again, the Crunch Catholic Podcast does not and never will, maybe one day, but probably not, condone the purchasing and sale of women. Thank you all for listening. Please pray for us. We will be praying for you, and we will see you all next time.